So today I'll be treating plantar fasciitis using the Enrafnonius Endolaser 120. If we look at the menu here, we'll come into the clinical protocols. You see the very last clinical protocol is plantar fasciitis. I'm going to select that. If you look closely at the display here, you'll see that the laser is doing four points. That's because this is a cluster probe each point giving one centimeter squared. We're getting joules per point of four. So that's four joules per centimeter squared. This would be in line with the Walt guidelines, which suggest four joules minimum per centimeter squared. That means we're gonna get overall joules across the four laser diodes of 16. So four times four. If you look at the bottom here, you'll see this is the more powerful of the cluster probes. So this is a 200 milliwatt times four. So it's gonna take 20 seconds to give the total output of 16 joules. So 20 seconds to give four joules per point. A common thing to do on the larger probe actually is to turn it down at this point to 100 milliwatts. And you'll see at 100 milliwatts, the treatment time has doubled to 40 seconds. Once we've selected our treatment parameters, we press OK. And now the laser is ready to begin the treatment. The actual on off for the laser is on the probe itself. So we'll come back to that in a moment. Seen from the perspective of the treatment, we're going to do one spot, two spots, three spots onto the plantar fascia. We'll start here, press the button, and you'll see now that the light turn changes to orange. This denotes that the laser is active. And we'll do this treatment across the whole of the plantar fascia. If you were using a smaller laser probe, you would have to do more spots. A larger laser probe, with more cluster, you need to do fewer spots. In essence, you want to give a minimum of four joules per centimeter squared. So in this case, we're doing three lots of treatment across the whole of the plantar fascia. Looking at the laser base unit again, once you press the button to begin the treatment, You'll see that down here on the screen, the actual applied joules are shown, counting in real time. And the amount of time left in the treatment is shown at the bottom here. Again, counting down in real time. There'll be a bleep to let you know that the laser is finished once it's finished, in case you can't see the patient. It's not uncommon to do multiple points on the plantar fascia if the area that's affected is larger than the treatment head. Generally, you go for one treatment head per size of area, although you could do more. You'll see now once it gets to zero, you get the warning sound to say that the treatment has finished. If you were going to do more than one point at this stage now, we would uh, press the milliwatts button at the bottom, select a dosage again. So I've gone for 100 milliwatts again. You'll see here we've got 16 joules applied. That's because I've already applied 16 joules in this session. I press OK, move the laser now to the new point and start the treatment again. If the affected area of the plantar fascia is only one spot, this is fairly common where people would refer to having symptoms of an inferior bone spur, although they are not actually bone. But if you've got symptoms just at that one spot, people often refer to it as the origin of the plantar fascia, then you might just want to treat that one spot and you might use a single laser rather than a cluster probe. Obviously, if you're going to do a large area with a single laser, this is going to take a lot longer. With a cluster probe, this will be a lot quicker. In this situation, because the area is the whole of the plantar fascia, we're going to be doing at least three treatments. So we'll come back in again, 
select a dosage again you'll see now the applied dose is 32 joules but that's across the whole area that we've treated so in this case that's 32 joules across four points of one centimeter squared times two because we've done two lots of treatment or in other words we've still given the four joules per point we've just spread the points out in this case over many more points and we'll continue on now and do the last part of the treatment you can turn the laser probes higher or lower depending on how much energy you want to give if you decide to go higher you have to remember that there will be a chance of overdosing so uh, if you overdose the area it's likely you'll get inhibition of the tissues rather than stimulation of the tissues sometimes in the plantar fascia that wouldn't be the worst thing you'd end up with inhibition of the pain although you probably wouldn't get much healing to the area and that's our three sessions across the plantar fascia